Let's continue with oil imports and exports. We are going to see two main concepts, crude trade and refined product. So let's get started with crude trade. The main idea of crude oil is essentially that these are the ones that, well, number one, they have the actual basin or they have the production wells. And secondly, they are willing to export it, not likely to keep it. And second, these are countries that are betting mostly towards the selling of the crude oil or the primary feedstock rather than the refining of the product in-house and selling it. Now, remember guys that crude oil versus refined products are two different things, especially in volume. You're going to see that later on. Uh, sometimes you cannot refine all the crude oil that you have, specifically in countries that have a lot of production. And in other cases, there's a lot of countries that are willing to import crude oil in order to work it through, add the value and sell it as refined products. So that's a very interesting thing that we're going to be analyzing right here. So one, international trade of crude oil was 2.1 billion tons in 2022. So let's say two for simplicity, a billion tons in the whole world which is an increase of 4% and if we compare it to the previous year. Now the Middle East, mainly OPEC countries, dominated exports accounting for 43% of the total, followed by Russia, which is 12%. But look at the disparity, 43% to 12%. The second place, it's already too low. Now these two billions, this is mostly uh, something around 0 0.9 billion tons are produced by the Middle East and Russia will be something around zero point. You, so you have a better understanding of the amounts. On the import side, which is this side right here, remember there's always producers and consumers. The Asia Pacific region accounted for nearly 60% of the total of that two a billion tons. The 60% will be something around 1.2 billion tons to Asia Pacific, which is mainly China, India, and Japan which technically is 75% of these 1.2 billions. And at 0.5 billion tons, Europe was the second largest destination. Of course, if we're talking about regions, Europe, what's 0.5 tons? If we do the mathematics of the 2 billions right here, 25% uh, of this should be something around 0.5. So it makes sense. Now let's analyze the individual uh, cases, experts, very importantly to understand that it goes from top to bottom. So first and most relevant will be Middle East. Unfortunately, there is no scale for the sizes, but you get a understanding. The Middle East, then we got the Russian Federation, Canada, should be something around 10% compared to Russia. Then we got USA, something around 7, 8%. So very interesting to see that the top four players is Middle East, Russian Federation, Canada, and the US. Now, we already know that Europe is not one of the best uh, crude oil producers, so here we have it. Now, Mexico is one important case. We have production, but it's not quite relevant to other big countries. Now, in the import size, this is very important. If they are importing crude oil, it's mainly because, number one, they are not able to account for their own production, meaning that they are producers, but still require more uh, crude oil. They have a deficit or simply they do not have crude oil or a relevant amount of production. Now for China, we already know that China does have some crude oil, but most of the deficit of the crude oil, China is in the situation of importing more crude oil. So yes, China is one of the top crude oil importers. Then Europe, as stated before, Europe is a very small player. Uh, actually, you could say this is much more of a consumer than a producer. The US is a very specific fun case to analyze because this is so privatized market. We have individual purchases and sellings of crude oil. So you have a balance overall. We're going to see this in the refined products. Other Asia Pacific, India and Japan. Remember that we were telling that China, India, and Japan are the key players, but if we also accounted for the other Asia Pacific, uh, we're talking about Indonesia, Philippines, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, and so on, we will see that these well are the biggest importer of crude oils. Now, sorry, Singapore is right here. So it's not included in other Asia Pacific. Now we have also Canada, Middle East, kind of fun to see that, yes, biggest importer, biggest exporter, and smaller importer.
Now, let's continue with refined products. Refined products is mostly towards the products that could be gasoline, naphtha, liquefied petroleum gases, we're talking diesel, fuel oils, kerosene, bunker oils, asphalt maybe, most likely uh, liquid fuels. So, number one, at 1.2 billion tons, so remember that before we were talking about 2.1 billion tons, so this is quite a difference of the refined products versus the crude oils. Uh, international trade of refined product was around 40%, that of crude oil in terms of volume, and only 2.5% higher than the previous year. Now, first things first, probably you're wondering why is it not the same amounts? Well, first things first, a lot of crude oil will be consumed inside, meaning that they need to be self-sufficient. So a lot of crude oil will be simply consumed in the refinery or in any other type of utility services. And this is specifically on the trading, so we cannot account for the individual, let's say, accumulation. It's mostly exports and imports, so we're not taking into account what's going on in the domestic level. Middle East and the U.S. account for the 45% of the total exports at almost 0.3 uh, ton, billion tons and 0.25 billion tons respectively. So we got 29 for Middle East, 25 for the U.S. Now, this is very interesting that Middle East has been investing a lot into working towards refined products. It's no longer the typical place that will only extract petroleum or oil and will sell it in barrels. They are also working with the refineries and they have been working greatly because they are one of the biggest exporters of refined products. And the U.S. has been always been one of the top uh, refined products producers. At 0.5 billion tons, we have Asia Pacific region accounting for 40% of the total imports. Now, this is very interesting. We're talking about now imports. And yes, Asia Pacific is still being one of the key players. Europe was the second largest importer of refined products at 0.2 billion tons. Still, we know that Europe is one of the largest importers of crude oils, but it is not self-sufficient. They don't have enough refinery output, so they still need to import the refined products. Okay, so let's go individually or case by case exports of refined products. We got Middle East, the US, other Asia Pacific, Russian Federation, Europe, India. And probably you're wondering why I'm selecting all these. Well, these are all relevant. I would say most of these, maybe even Canada, but these are the top players on refined products, guys. Now, it's very important that whenever we talk about other Asia Pacific, we may be talking about Korea, Taiwan, Singapore, no, Singapore is right here, and Japan is right here. Uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, which other country, maybe Vietnam, and so on. Now, the imports, most of these are from other Asia Pacific. And actually, if you were to account for which other type of country we're talking about, Singapore is exporting most of the quantities of the other Asia Pacific countries. Then we have Middle East, which also accounts for the other Asia Pacific uh, region. And this is something that I will strongly recommend you guys try to follow all along and try to analyze. For instance, we got South and Central America. The biggest chunk right here is purple. And if we go back to the trails, we are seeing that most of the refined products for these countries are from the U.S. And this might be gasoline, this may be diesel, jet fuels, and so on. The U.S. is very interesting in case because we have uh, not a big player. Maybe we can see a little bit on Canada. Maybe you can see a little bit on Europe, but will not have a big player. Now, China is very interesting as well. In the previous case, we saw how China is the biggest importer of crude oil. But China, and we're going to see this later on, has a bigger refinery output. Hence, they don't require to import that much refined product. Then Mexico, also a very interesting case. From first hand, I can tell you guys that most of the gasoline comes from Texas. And this is true if we were to follow back the trail. It is the purple one, and we know that the purple one is the U.S. Now, if you are from India, maybe you want to check out this. This is mostly from Middle East. Uh, if you want to check, for example, the biggest exporter client for Europe, well, you will see that maybe Africa is one. Then you could try to follow along, but these are small trails. The biggest chunk goes to Africa. You can do this, and I will strongly recommend you to do it. So you get a better understanding on the regions, the players. Remember that we are just covering the highlights or very key 
players, but if you want to pay extra attention, I will strongly recommend you to do it. And then I have here the two main products. I really think it's very important to see crude trade versus refined product trades, imports and exports. So you can maybe see if it's bouncing back. The worst case scenario will be that you are producing crude oils, you send it abroad and then you bring the refined products because you are paying extra for that added value. That's very common for developing countries. We also have the reverse that countries and the OECD, let's say European countries, they don't have crude oil, but they import crude oil. They work the refined products. They keep some of the refined products, but also they export such refined products. And of course, we have the worst case in which the country does not produce crude oil and does not has a importation of crude oil and hence are not working in the production of refined products. So they need to import the refined products. Actually, let's see that specific case. Let's verify which country or region is most likely going to import refined products rather than to work it through. And for this, we will need to analyze this side of the column. And let's see, maybe, okay, Singapore may be a specific case, although I know Singapore has some crude oil production. Japan could be also one specific case. Unfortunately, we have Africa, or let's say the whole Africa continent here. And then we have West Africa, North Africa. So it's kind of hard to compare. Let's see, maybe China, Middle East, Mexico, is both producer and consumer importer so yeah actually i wouldn't say in this specific case that we have one region that does that and actually i think it's a good idea let's verify which type of countries are actually producers of crude oils but are not doing their own refinery and firsthand i will tell you that mexico is one of such cases we have the crude oil production it's exported mostly to europe and the us Actually, we have the US right here. If you were to follow along, it will be US mostly. And then we go back here to Mexico and we have this purple case. As stated before, we have a lot of refined product importation, which is definitely not the best thing because you are losing that added value. And of course, transportation and all those taxes and so on. Now, maybe let's go and verify Europe will be another case or a reverse case in which they have a very small amount of production of crude oil, but are one of the top exporters or sellers of refined product. And that's very interesting because yes, they, as you can see here, they are the second player whenever we're talking about crude oil importation, they work it through, they refine it. They keep of course some in house, but also they make business selling it to other countries.